The kids are still with me. What I'm gonna do is sneak into the backyard and see Greg's reaction because we've seen this. You guys have probably seen it because it was on our Team Aquascape page, but Greg has not seen it. Now that's a welcoming view to a backyard and the fence looks amazing. Holy cow, this is awesome. If I like it like this before I've even seen the pond, you can only imagine the pond's gonna be crazy cool. So I am totally blown away. I got to talking with the customers and I've never seen a pond this clear. All of our ponds, the water is clear. What I've never seen is how pristine the rocks and stuff still look. I mean, it looks like we just finished this pond and this pond has been in since May. Look at my kids, just right on in there. This pond's got all the bells and whistles, right? It's got a big wetland filter over here loaded with tropical plants. There's a 6,000 biofalls up at the top here. There's the starting point of the waterfall and stream kind of comes out, does that split and everything. She's done an incredible job planting. And then of course they have the ion gen and the dosing system, but it just looks incredible. And I love the detail, like as simple as the stepping stones that they use through the grass, but they went with the big thick ones. Like the bridge is really cool. You know, the step stone bridge with the tight little crack that we commonly do. The bridge and the pathway that leads to the destination boulder where you can kind of overlook the pond. You've got the two teak chairs back over in there. You've got a great fire pit section, some tasteful art. I love these rechargeable little globe lights that they have out here. And you can see they're continuing to buy more and more plants. The fence is incredible. I love the detail of my fence. And I really like this detail. The little accent thing of river stone next to the crushed granite pathway. Uh, just an unbelievable job. Way to go, you guys. I love when homeowners take it uh, even further than the vision I had. That kind of says it all, right? <laughs> Every stop is going to be more of an educational thing. It's not necessarily my favorite pond in the world. It's what I actually learned from it. This customer, we built the pond for it, feels like 19 some years ago. It was the very first time I went on a consultation, felt a little in over my head. At that point, it was the largest feature I had ever designed and definitely the biggest price tag. I remember vividly coming up their driveway and I had some notes, you know, and it said customer had started construction and his front yard doesn't know where to go from here. And so like you guys, I kind of assumed that uh, maybe it was a four by six foot pond by the front door. I looked to my right and I noticed an enormous hole in the front yard with a giant skid steer stuck with the excavator stuck next to it down in the bottom of the hole. This is the customer, Mike comes running out and says, hey pond guy, so glad you're here. What do you think? The two of us laughing pretty hard saying, oh, we could do this, we could do that. Getting excited about the potential of his 150 by 115 foot, about 17 foot deep hole. Let me turn this around and show you what we did. So we pull up the driveway, modest sized ranch house, and then we came over here and this is his pond. And so the very first thing we did is we shortened it up. We said, why don't we take a big section of this and turn it into a beach? I just remember playing in sand when I was a kid and the most annoying thing was hitting the bottom. So this sand goes down about three feet deep. We've got just kind of a boulder wall holding that back with some fabric. And then the other thing we did is shallow up his pond. So his pond's probably about six and a half, seven feet deep. And he originally started with game fish. And you can see some of these bass darting around in there. Just like myself, I got bored with the bass because you really only saw the bass when it was feeding time. And then said the koi are so much more fun, so let's put some koi in. Last year we added this wetland filter. The reason we added a wetland filter is because originally, to keep costs down, we only did one small wetland filter. I said, listen, if you want it crystal clear down to the bottom, we need to filter the heck out of this thing. If you just want a healthy pond, we can get away with one wetland filter. But as he started getting more and more into the koi, he uh, wanted to see him more and wanted clear water. So we added that wetland filter last year. My favorite part is obviously the log cabin on the edge of the pond. And so we'll come over here. He has an appropriate sign. Welcome to Lake Cha-Ching. It cost him a whole lot more money than what he thought. And here's the view from inside the cabin area. And then looking out, Waterfalls to your side, some jets over there, and then that crystal clear water all the way throughout. 
And so I love the pond. We have main wetland filters sitting up there. There's multiple ones as it comes down through some crashing boulder waterfalls. You can tell we built it a long time ago because of the enormous amount of small rock along the edges. One thing we would do differently is bring in a lot more bigger rock, but to keep costs down, we went with the small rock too. And it kind of goes all the way around. And now here's what I'll say. As much as I don't like the small rock that you see kind of along the perimeter, and I would love to do big giant boulders, when you have unbelievable fish in the pond, unbelievable landscape around the edges you don't pay attention to the rock as much i see it and know the fullest potential on it, but it looks gorgeous there's not a person that comes in this backyard and says man you really cut some corners because it's truly amazing i mean who wouldn't live in this thing on a day-to-day -day basis and swim in this pond all the time you guys want to go see another one all right guys we're at my all-time favorite pond i've known these customers since 1994 actually before i even started working for aquascape and i remember vividly seeing this pond for the first time thinking to myself this is definitely what i want to do this is how i want my pond to look these two brothers were way ahead of their time way back then the ex-employee of aquascape actually came out here and built the original pond back in 1993 ish probably and then aquascape came out and added some things the main reason i really wanted to show you guys this pond is because for me, it was such an inspiration for how I designed so many ponds. Uh, my favorite thing were the bridge. And you guys have heard me say a thousand times before that a bridge needs to lead to something, right? And so this bridge definitely leads to something. The other thing I'll say about bridges is there's something psychological about them. I've been here during pond tours. There's not a person in the world that can resist crossing a bridge if they see it. So let me just kind of show you the pond, what I saw when I first got here you know, back in 1994, and then the additions and things that we've done, and how and why it inspired me so much. So there's the pond, that signature bridge. We've seen it in so many different magazines, so many different Aquascape photos. They've been in all kinds of other pond magazines and books, and it's a very fa famous bridge, I think, in the pond world. The other thing that the brothers are famous for over here is uh, their fish. They have enormous, beautiful, beautiful koi. What we love showing about this pond and something that they will vouch for over and over again is how giant koi, 24 to 30, 30 inches plus, will live in two feet to three feet of water in a rock and gravel pond. They've never ever drained and power washed this pond. It's never been cleaned like we do so many other ponds. They just stay up on it. So when I got here the first time, there was a pond in this area and it went maybe probably eight, 10 feet past the bridge over in there. There was a waterfall that came right on the edge, right in here, and that was it. The first thing I did with them back in 95 was add this little tributary stream. I really wanted it to look like the water had split behind this U and kind of came in from there and then came that way. So we added this little tributary stream and it was the first stream I ever designed to be more of a bird loving stream. Really, really gentle flow, all hand sized boulders. I remember being so proud of it for when we finished and just loved the way it turned out. A few years later, we ripped out their original waterfalls and added this one, just giving it a little bit more of our touch. But you know, big rock on one side, big rock on the other side, water comes in between, a split little waterfall up there, and then the bio falls is actually back behind the U, so you never see it. So, so many other things I talk about with design and, and I stole from the brothers here was, I love projects that create some mystery. And when I saw this back in 94, I was like, oh, I just love it. The other thing you've got to realize with this backyard is it's not that big. 60 foot wide lot. You probably got 30 some feet between the garage and the fence. And talk about taking a property to its fullest potential. It's unbelievable. And so here's a close up of some of these fish. That's actually one of their babies, believe it or not. So that's Sunny down there. And then there's a Shishui in here, which is still, there it is, which is one of the original fish. So that fish they got at about five, six inches in size 27 years ago. And it looks as healthy as any of these other fish in here. So we've got a skimmer box here that actually feeds the waterfalls up in there. And then as we come across the bridge here, the original pond stopped right in this area, kind of in here. And then we added onto it. And so we call this the channel where the fish kind of go through. And the channel is probably 15 to 16 inches deep, but the channel and the bridge take you around and then you discover that there's a whole lot more pond over here. And what I love so much about discovering that section is you also discover that their yard is relatively, it's narrow and long and they have an unbelievable garden throughout the whole thing with another little walking path that goes around through the garden. 
And so we come over here and we see these stairs and the stairs lead you and take you on that journey up to the deck. And we get a, a, a completely different perspective of the pond when we get over into this area. Now the challenging part with this pond is you see that door? When we built this section of the pond from there to there, every scoop of dirt and every piece of gravel, every rock had to come through that door through a little ramp. And so this side of the pond goes down 36 inches. The other thing the Reed Brothers taught me to do was how to train my fish to eat from my hands. And so if you see that, he's taking his hand like this, puts it in there, and those fish. That was awesome. Hey, another great thing I was just talking with Bill about is trying to go back to basics sometimes too. We get so inspired with these projects we do with enormously sized boulders, the big equipment and everything else. And here's a project, not a single rock is bigger than what we could put in a wheelbarrow because we had to. And so there's a few big ones in here that we may have used the tree jolly and some fabric to help move back and forth. But when it's properly landscaped and the fish look like this, your eyes sure don't pay attention to the size of the boulders that are going around you're you're really just kind of pulling in all the beauty of this and so for you guys that are getting into it and new don't think you need to go out and buy skid steers and excavators and stuff this is a pond we built well over 20 years ago and it's still holding up just great and nobody comes back here and says boy it would look better with big machine sized boulders in fact to me on this particular pond big machine sized boulders would take away from the look of it. All right guys, last stop of the day, my house. Thought I'd share with you my house for one reason. When I designed my pond, tried to design it based off of all the things that I loved about all the other projects we had put together in the past. I felt like I designed it so there was no opportunity to make it any different or bigger or better. I was so far from the truth and I kind of knew that even after I had built it. I love my pond for so many reasons. I love it because of the memory of building it. Some of you guys don't know, it was a bunch of CACs came out towards the end of the project and help me finish the thing. Greg kind of surprised me with that, which was an awesome, awesome thing. The memory of it will last a lifetime. What I've learned most about my pond is the enjoyment that I get with my family out here, my family and friends. So I walk around the side here, cue family. <laughs> but no families, no families out here yet. Usually there's some kids jumping around over there. I uh, usually finish up the evening down over in here. This is my sunken fire pit area. But I come this way, and like so many other ponds that I tell you about, I love the ponds that create mystery. And I've said it a thousand times, but I'm gonna say it again. I loved that when you come around the corner, you hear the sound of that waterfall, you see this waterfall, and then as you get closer, you actually see another waterfall way off in the distance, but don't care about it yet too much. You see a little bit of a pond with some fish darting around, and as you get in here, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, this is cool. Well, this was originally designed as my kid's baby pool, and it was considerably bigger. It actually went all the way back over into this area and through here. Ed came out and helped me one weekend, and we transformed a bunch of stuff in here, shrunk it down because the kids were getting older and not using it as much, still kept the stairs, which I love, put in this little planting area to soften it up, added in an urn, and I'm guessing the kids were messing around and it's not running right now. Shortly after that, we did that space over there. But let me take you this way because this is still the mystery part. And then you come up over in here, outdoor kitchen area. And here's why I like it so much. I'm able to talk to customers even about this and how important it is when doing a design to keep the grill as close to your back door as possible. Because when it's set up like this all year long, that includes when it's 10, 10 degrees outside, I can walk out here still cook fish, still cook steak, still cook chicken without making a big mess inside. And so I love the convenience of this. I also know that having an outdoor fridge is kind of key in the summer. It's just great to be able to walk back here, open that baby up and grab a cold one. You come around, remember that waterfall that you saw a little bit of a glimpse from back over there? Now we see it over here and you really appreciate the work that went into all of this. There's nothing better than kind of sitting in this space, especially in the morning. You know, every morning I kind of come out to my rocking chair, check out my waterfall. And here's what I've learned about my waterfall. The sound of a waterfall is everything. And I really wanted a tall sheet style waterfall right here because it doesn't put off the same amount of sound as a babbling brook type waterfall or a waterfall that crashes over and over and over again. I was extremely concerned about the sound of this waterfall amplifying with this area right in here and making this space unenjoyable. But this waterfall is truly awesome. I love it so much. We've got some of the slate work in here. This is 
uh, water lettuce. I like to grow it almost as a vine. If it doesn't have a big pool to grow in, it just it will continue to spread and spread and spread. And look at how awesome it is as it starts hanging down the falls. It's just such a cool look. Another cool plant to put in the water. Nobody would think to do it. Hostas. This hosta is actually growing directly in the water. And if we pull this stuff back, check out the root system. Nature will find a way 100%. This host is actually kind of growing around that rock. And it looks great there. I can't think of an aquatic plant that would look better there and tolerate that amount of shade. So as we continue this way, we realize that the pond is actually considerably bigger than we thought from over there. And so we come in over here and we've got a lot more going on. So I'm a fish, knowing the routine as well as I do. This time of day, they usually get fed by me. Some babies down in there. I also know the importance of jets. And so again, this goes all back to living with the pond. And if I didn't live with the pond, there's no way I could sell them this way. There's no way I could talk about them this way. I know what I'm talking about because I've lived with this thing for 11 years and I know what I would do different and I know what I did right. But obviously this is a big dead area back in here. And so I have jets pushing water out from this space, which keeps the, all the debris kind of moving that way. And then I have circulation over here from my basalt column waterfall. That's my wetland filter, and that's the main filter on this pond, and that keeps everything pushing this way. I also love, 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 love my aerator that sits underneath, that's my fish cave, that big giant rock right there. And so it goes clearly underneath there. Well, I have an air stone that sits underneath there, and as the air comes up, it hits the bottom of that stone, and then eventually builds up to the point where it kind of sporadically bubbles out in different areas. Right now, you see it bubbling aggressive there, and then every now and then, it shows up over there. I put another aerator over there with a light on it, because at night, it just looks cool. This is the fish feeding area for my kids. It was also, when I had a big dog, the area for him to come in and actually get into the pond. So this was kind of his stepping stones to to walk in this way. So there's kind of my pond in a nutshell. I promised I'd show you some of the other little things that I've learned, you know, and, and a lot of that has to do with edge treatments. Edges are everything and plants are everything. If you don't give plants the opportunity to grow next to the pond, meaning often less rock is better, I'd rather see, let's take this area for example. It would have been very easy to drop in some more rock in this space because the liner continued to go back and so on and so on. Well, we cut all that liner out. By cutting that liner out and bringing soil all the way close to the basalt columns, it allowed me to plant a hosta right there. It allowed me to plant some of the catmint right there. A Japanese maple, this Hinoki cypress. And then what looks inc incredible is when the plants start growing up over the edge and you hear the saying, you can't tell where the water ends or where the land begins. And that's so important. Like I always challenge our customers or the landscaper, please try to hide the rocks that we put in. As much time and effort as I spend carving all those things in, or Chris spends that time, or you guys spend carving those rocks in, you want to try to hide those rocks. They'll never completely hide them, but how much better does it look when that hydrangea starts falling down onto those boulders? How much better does it look when this catoniaster hides this linear edge? Plants can actually hide all of your mistakes. This was the one section of the pond I never really liked because it ended up having to be very parallel to this area here and the grill. Now, with this big laced elderberry and the ketoniaster, you have no idea that that edge is straight and that water actually goes way underneath this thing. So there's a perfect example of hiding those edges. That's my pond. Those are some of the tricks. That's what I love about it the most. It's the family. It's the education I get from it. It's my family's education that they get from it. It's the enjoyment that the neighborhood gets out of it. It's the memories that we will have for a lifetime. And it's all of that rolled up so I can share it when I go on every consultation, whether it's for homeowners or even to share it with you guys. Thanks so much, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tour. I love kind of doing this. Next year, let's hope we can do it live. Till then, bye.